Streaming live, this is News 12 Now. Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. Um, today we're going to be talking about some of the respiratory illnesses that we're seeing uh, both here in Louisiana and across the country. Joining me now I have uh, Dr. Mike Sewell and he will be bestowing his knowledge upon us to talk about some of the things that we're seeing here. Um, so first off, I want you to start off by telling me, uh, generally speaking, when it comes to the respiratory illnesses, how does this year compare to previous uh, flu and COVID seasons? You know, going back to before there was uh, COVID, uh, we had soft flu and RSV pretty frequently um, in high numbers during this time of the year, going into November, December, January, February. And then during the COVID uh, time, it seemed like the, the flu numbers went down. But now comparing this back to our pre-COVID days, where this is about like we're normally used to seeing, which is um, an increase in RSV, an increase in flu and a slight increase in COVID now too. So when it comes to uh, some of the other respiratory illnesses like flu and RSV, do you think that the fact that COVID protocols have changed has played a role in what we're seeing? I think so. Um, you know, of course, this time of year, uh, the temperatures get colder, people go inside more, people are um, uh, assimilating groups inside in close proximity, and that's usually a big factor in it going up. Uh, I think people are a little more aware um, of staying home when they're sick, of hand washing, um, social distancing a little bit, um, maybe not staying six, eight feet away from everyone, but being more cognizant about being sick. And uh, I think certainly the COVID experience is, has improved our likelihood of surviving the RSV and flu uh, spikes every, every fall. Of course, something that we talk about for each of these illnesses, every single season is getting vaccinated. And I understand that this week is actually National Influenza Vaccination Week. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we encourage everyone uh, to get a flu vaccine. It's, uh, it's a very easy thing to do. And it, it's really the number one thing we can do to reduce our likelihood of severe illness from the flu. Uh, we start vaccinating around October. Um, but it's not too late to get a shot even into January and February because flu season will even go into some into March and April. Um, flu vaccine is relatively good at preventing the flu. And then also, if you are to get the flu, it seems like your severity of illness is a lot better. We encourage everyone to get the, the flu vaccine. And all of our eligible uh, employees here at Oshner LSU get the flu vaccine as well to help, help protect ourselves, but also protect our patients. Well, also, uh, just this year, we have seen uh, that the children's medication is hard to find now because of the, the severity of what we're seeing when it comes to these different illnesses. What would your recommendation be to uh, families uh, if they have a sick child? Yeah, of course, um, trying to, to isolate and stay at home, keep the child at home, and then, um, if possible, um, st each of the members that are exposed to the flu staying at home as well. Now, it's hard. We all have jobs to do. We all have things that uh, you know, we have to go about our lives, but certainly minimizing exposure to other people is one of the best things we can do. Um, some of the antivirals, the Tamiflu and several uh, other options uh, are in a little bit of short supply. There's supply chain issues of a lot of different things. Um, taking those things as a preventative would actually be the, the number one choice if possible. Uh, but if not, uh, hand washing, good hygiene, and avoiding crowds, just like we did with COVID, uh, would be very beneficial for those exposed to the flu as well. So when we take a look at our current um, hospital systems and what you guys are seeing here locally within our hospitals, what has it been like for you being on the front lines? And it seems like every year it's just been one thing after the other. Um, so what are you guys seeing this time around? I tell you, healthcare has taken a hit the last several years. It's, and you're right, it does seem like one thing after another. Um, what we're seeing right now is an uptick in RSV, an uptick in COVID, an uptick in flu. Um, but most of those have been outpatient cases. We really haven't had a lot of patients admitted to the hospital with those illness. We're seeing some uh, that we normally see this time of year. Um, but the most of our cases, thankfully, have been mild enough that people can stay out of the hospital. Um, and that's a really good thing because our hospitals are overcrowded now with other illnesses and um, staffing shortages uh, everywhere in healthcare 
uh, are causing um, difficulty in getting patients through the system, getting them what they need, getting them out of the hospital so we can make room for others. The hospitals, all of the hospitals locally are really stretched to capacity already. We really don't have a lot of room for a big surge with viral illnesses. If we can keep those in an outpatient uh, arena, we'll all be better off. And so what would your recommendation be to someone? How do they know when it's time to actually go to the doctor if they're feeling these flu-like symptoms? So really, un unless your symptoms get severe, um, it's better to manage these at home if possible. Um, uh, of course, shortness of breath, um, really high fevers, um, an intractable cough, things that, that would portend to more severe illness. Uh, if you feel short of breath, out of proportion to activity, those things uh, would, would make you want to go get seen. Um, uh, a low-grade fever with an irritating cough is, is most likely a viral illness right now. Um, unless you have to get tested for your workplace or unless you have to get tested to protect your family, uh, honestly, a lot of those people are probably better off to stay at home, uh, treating themselves with symptomatic relief over the counter. And there's not a lot we can do outside of the antivirals, as you mentioned. Um, now, if you have other illnesses, if you have asthma, uh, COPD, hypertension, uh, diabetes, things that would make you more likely to have a more severe illness, you may want to get tested because there are antivirals that we can do both for COVID and the flu. Uh, but if you're otherwise healthy, your symptoms are mild, you're probably better off handling those at home. Is there anything else that you want to add or that you want to touch on that maybe I didn't? Uh, just common sense, uh, good hand hygiene, um, uh, covering your face when you call for sneeze, uh, distancing yourself, staying home if you have a fever so you don't expose those things. All of the lessons we learned during COVID uh, are helpful all the time, but especially during RSV and flu season. And um, just try to protect yourself and protect others. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on. We'll have Alexandra back here in just a few minutes to talk about what we got going on. Thank you so much. All righty. Thank you so much, Destiny, for doing that interview. We're going to hear more from him during the later shows, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. And we're also going to take a look at the COVID numbers in our area real quick. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Here we are. Here's a look at our, the Louisiana Department of Health website where currently it looks like there are higher numbers for COVID specifically. Let me just 